If I could have your attention, please. I'd like to welcome you to our January 27th, 2022 council meeting. In the interest of time efficiency and ensuring that everyone who wishes to address the council is given the opportunity to do so, the following will apply to all comments made by the public. If you desire to be recognized by the chair, please fill out a request form and present it to the city clerk present here in council chambers. Each speaker will be allotted three minutes to address the council unless this time is extended by the mayor or by questions from council. Groups shall designate spokesmen to avoid repetition comments. Every effort will be made to avoid interrupting speakers. Thank you for participating in your city government. We ask that you please silence all electronic devices. With that, I call this meeting and council meeting to order. Could we all please stand together for our invocation that will be brought to us by Pastor Alden Whiteman from Amazing Grace Baptist Church. Pastor Whiteman, it is a joy to have you here again. You will please remain standing after the invocation for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Almighty God, it is indeed a privilege to be able to come before your throne tonight, asking your intercession and direction and help on this council meeting. We're so thankful, our Father, for giving us a nation of freedom, of liberty, freedom of conscience. Oh, precious Father, we thank you that St. Cloud City Village, this community, has certainly been at the forefront of these attributes. As we see people from all different parts of the world coming to move here and live here and enjoy the freedom and enjoy the, the opportunities that's been given in this community. Thank you, our Father, that also the Council of St. Cloud recognizes the Black History Week. And thank you, our Father, for those that are here tonight to for members of that. Thank you, Father, for the direction and the strides that St. Cloud has made over the years in order to welcome in businesses and people of other color and people of black community. Thank you for men like Richard Saunders and others that had businesses and ran business and successful in St. Cloud, free from harassment and free from problems. We thank you, our Father, that you give wisdom and guidance to this council, that indeed that they would make uh, really sure the decisions they make, there's so much on these agendas that they have that must be done. Give them wisdom as they are making decisions that are money that's in the thousands and maybe perhaps in the millions. Lord, it's an awesome, awesome responsibility you're giving to the council members. These men and women are here to bring, indeed, a direction that is plausible and the only thing that is, gent is gentle, one that makes St. Cloud the type of city that it is. Bless them and encourage them and guide them. We thank you, our Father, for the privilege now of being able to speak up on behalf of our government, on behalf of our people. We ask your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You tell me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. you may be seated. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Mayor Blackwell? Here. Deputy Mayor Matheny? Here. Councilmember Urban? Here. Councilmember Askew? Here. Councilmember Trace? Here. Before we have our proclamations, are there any updates to the agenda? Thank you, Mayor. The only uh, change to the agenda is the proclamation and recognition of Dave Ennis Day. That will be postponed to a future date. So noted, and thank you very much. Mr. Robert Bass here. There he is. I couldn't recognize you for the mask. Would you mind coming up, Robert? <laughs> I should have known you for the by the glare there. Come on up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he 
if you wouldn't mind, I'd love for you to stand there. Whereas Mr. Robert Bass has been a mentor for the youth in our community through his volunteering with Little E, and whereas Robert has generously lived the service above self motto by giving his time and talents to help others in St. Cloud for more than 30 years. And whereas Robert's dedication to continuing the tradition of the annual Christmas parade has been vital to his continued success and enjoyment by countless families. And whereas Robert's community-minded citizenship has been commendable <coughs> and his efforts have created memorable events and should be publicly recognized. And whereas Robert has enriched the community and has helped make it a great place to live, work, and play, now therefore I, Mayor Nathan Blackwell, in recognition of Robert Bass' devotion and service, hereby present this proclamation and key to the city of St. Cloud as a formal showing of the city's gratitude for its service. Robert, we are indebted to you. Thank you so much for your service. Talk right now. Give me a minute. Let's, let's get the picture done first. All right, let's do that now. Step over here. Then. Yes. Well, I, I received an email a couple weeks ago saying we need you to attend the city council meeting. And I, I really did, I thought it was maybe school board related maybe, but <laughs> wasn't really sure. Um, I'm really proud to see that my ninth grade English teacher showed up. <laughs> You're on my mind a lot. You really truly are. I want you to understand that. You were, you were a big influence on me, big influence on me. Um, I just, you know, St. Cloud has been a great home for me. It's been, it's uh, all of the, everything that has been it's given me the opportunity to, to mentor children and, and, and introduce them to St. Cloud and make St. Cloud their home to all of the new people that are moving to the area. And um, as long as I can keep doing it, I'm going to keep on doing it. And uh, thank you for allowing me to do the Christmas parade every year. And thank you for allowing me to keep calling it the Christmas parade because we don't have holiday parades. We have Christmas parades. But, but thank you so much. Um, but, but, but thank you again, and thanks to, thanks to all of you for, for this. This is going to mean, this means so much to me, and, uh, but thank you. Thank <laughs> you. And there's a box. Oh, a box to put in. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it would be amazing if everyone had the heart of service that uh, Robert has certainly had. At this time, we would like to share a proclamation in recognition of Black History Month to Dolores McMillian and her guests. Would you come right on up? I think you have some uh, team members here with you. You can just come and stand here. And because of the nature of this proclamation, could I invite the council down and come and join for this one, please? Probably should have done that for Robert, too. <laughs> Whereas in 1915, Dr. Carter Goodwin Woodson, noted black scholar and son of former slaves, founded the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. And whereas Dr. Woodson initiated Black History Week, February the 12th, 1926, chosen to coincide with the birthdays of Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln. And whereas since 1976, every US president has officially designated the month of February as Black History Month. And whereas Black History Month calls our nation's attention to the continued need to recognize and combat racism. And whereas Black History Month is a time for all Americans to reflect on past successes and challenges of black communities and look to the future to ensure freedom, equality, and inclusiveness. And whereas Black History Month is an annual celebration of achievements by African Americans and a time for recognizing their central role in US history. And whereas the Black History Month 
2022 theme is Black Health and Wellness, and whereas the City of St. Cloud is committed to diversity, equality, inclusion, and mutual respect as a fundamental aspect of, healthy, of a healthy, thriving community, now therefore I, Mayor Nathan Black, will do hereby proclaim February 2022 as Black History Month in the City of St. Cloud, and I urge all citizens to contribute our efforts to create a world that is more just, peaceful, and prosperous for all. And we certainly thank Dolores McMillian for her leadership and all that you have done to make a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to share a word? Yes. Good evening. Good evening. And to the councilman, uh, the mayor, Blackwell, and the City Councilman, it's, uh, it's nice to be remembered by your former students. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, no longer is it Black History Week. It's Black History Month. But however, we stress Black History is 365 days of the year. We pay tribute to those African Americans who have made a significant contribution to our country and of course to Osceola County. And with me this evening, we have leaders here. These are St. Cloud former students and leaders in Osceola County. Marilyn Walker is a graduate from St. Cloud High School and she's also president of the Women's Democratic Club. We have uh, Jennifer Paul, who is one of the committee members of the NAACP. I'm president. And she is a uh, committee chair for the Environmental Justice Committee. And Ann Jones, a resident here in Osceola County, Nakusi, she is the secretary for about 30 years. So she's been very active. And I'd like you to know personally that I love St. Cloud. I integrated St. Cloud in 1969. I was the first black teacher at St. Cloud High School. And I would uh, like to say that I love those students. They accepted me, and I was there not just as a black teacher, but I was a teacher for all the students. And they rallied around me, and we had much success. And St. Cloud High School would always hold a special place in my heart. Thank you again. Again, thank you, <laughs> Mayor. <laughs> I'd like to also make a notation that uh, to the councilman, I started the first girls basketball team at St. Cloud High School. First girls basketball team, 1972. And in 1977, we advanced and we ranked sixth in the state of Florida. <laughs> I saw Mr. Dudley come in, did I not? There we go. At this time, we have a presentation by Scott Dudley, Joel Kilshimer, and Ken Krasnow regarding a very special Catalyst grant that our city has been awarded. If you'll please step to the, to the front. I'd also like to invite Erin Jinks up. She's the one who applied for this grant, and she can tell you a little bit about it, and she'll be receiving uh, the check. Mayor, uh, council members, I'm Scott Dudley. I'm with the Florida League of Mayors in Tallahassee, Florida. We're a sort of sister organization of the Florida League of Cities. Uh, mayor Blackwell sits on our board of the League of Mayors and has been a longtime member, and we appreciate that, Mayor. And 
I'm here tonight. It's one of my favorite things to do is, first of all, to go to city council meetings. Just to, It's so democratic, small d. It's a really cool thing to just be able to. I, I knew you had a problem. Would you like to go to council meetings? I, I, I do have a problem. <laughs> my, I, I, he references teacher before, and I, I, I had a teacher that really turned me on to politics. And when I told her I would, that that's what I do now, she's like, you're nuts. I didn't mean for you to do that. So, But, uh, yeah, I did a report on um, Watergate in seventh grade. Like, what would you do this summer? And I, like, reported on Watergate. There was a problem from way back. So, um, But anyway, uh, I'm at the League of Cities. I've uh, been there for 19 years. I'm the executive director of the League of Mayors. And uh, here tonight, to with a couple of our, we have a partnership with Florida Biz, with Business Watch. It used to be Florida Business Watch. I haven't got out of the habit of that yet. With Business Watch, um, so we had about uh, 70 cities apply for grants uh, across the state for uh, we call it the City Catalyst Grant, uh, and the League of Mayors ponies up some money, and and Business Watch ponies up some money, and. Um, you all submitted an application, very well done. And I'm, I get to this, another fun part of my job is I get to work with Business Watch and show up at meetings with big checks. Uh, and you don't get to keep the check. We've already, we've already sent you the money, but it's, it's just, a, just a, be hard to deposit anyway. Uh, but uh, League of Mayors is an organization, you know, Mayor, that uh, get together, talk about problems that are facing everybody, all cities in the state. There are some similar problems that they're facing get to network, you get to build relationships, learn how to do some things all together. Uh, and we work with Business Watch and Joe or, or Ken, I'll let one of you talk about Business Watch real fast. Thank you, Scott. Uh, before I talk about Business Watch real quick, I just wanted to share with you guys that in my youth, I was a reporter for the Orlando Sentinel and I covered the city of St. Cloud in 1981. <laughs> so uh, I told the mayor, it's been 40 years since I've been at St. Cloud City Hall and of course it wasn't in this building. I went on uh, to uh, run for office. I was uh, mayor of the city of Apopka for uh, four years, from 2014 to 2018. And um, so I, I think Apopka is second only to St. Cloud in terms of being the fastest growing, one of the fastest growing communities in Central Florida. So I so appreciate the challenges that you guys have in front of you. And I so appreciate staff members uh, uh, like you have here who look for opportunities to serve your community, especially those who are um, um, uh, underserved or um, you know, who just need extra help. It's a real challenge for cities like St. Cloud to be able to bring those programs uh, forward. So um, Business Watch is an organization that provides a venue where uh, uh, people or companies that work with government uh, can provide um, a, a networking organization and provide educational uh, programs. And so, um, again, on behalf of Business Watch, uh, we just want to congratulate the city of St. Cloud uh, and, uh, and say good job. So really thanks good. very much. So, um, Mayor, do you want to talk about what the project is? Yeah, do you want, her, do you want, you want to talk about the project some? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're really grateful. Um, what we're going to do with this grant is we're going to purchase some supplies and do some staff training to um, reach out to our uh, special needs uh, community and create an inclusive sports program. Uh, this way, you know, this is an underserved area and it's growing as our population grows. So we want to make sure that we are able to serve that part of our community. Thank you. We appreciate all the work. Very much. Yeah. <laughs> you know, interestingly, we had two, uh, I was in uh, Atlantic Beach the other night presenting an award there too, a, a grant, and they had a, a, also for a special needs program for their parks too, it was an inclusive uh, recreation program. So, uh, how do you want to, yep. Joey, go to one side here? Yep. <laughs> yeah, there So, thank you all, uh, council members. Thank you for everything you do, and we hope we see you in Tallahassee at the Legislative Action Days coming up, uh, and or if not at annual conference. We look forward to seeing you there, and thank you for your public service. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And we thank you very much. And uh, there will be a a group of our. 
staff and some of our council members going up for legislative session this coming week. <clears throat> the next portion of our agenda is the Citizens Forum. Any person who desires to comment on any item not on this agenda is provided this opportunity to address the City Council. Each person is requested to complete a signing form to be provided to the presiding officer prior to or as soon as is practical thereafter the person addresses the council. When you come forward, please state your name and address for the record and please limit your comments to three minutes. Uh, I don't have any requests at this point. Is there anyone who is wanting to speak to the council? If not, we'll move on to the next part of our agenda. The next part of our agenda is our consent agenda. This portion of tonight's meeting is the consent agenda, which contains items that have been determined to be routine and non-controversial. If anyone in the audience wishes to address a particular item on the consent agenda, now is the opportunity for you to do so. Additionally, if staff or members of the city council wish to speak on a consent item, they have the same opportunity. I'll ask, first of all, is there anyone on the council that has an item on the consent agenda you wish to address? Councilmember Matheny. Um, can I pull A and D? <clears throat> anyone else? Okay, Councilmember Matheny, would you like to address item number A? Yes, thank you so much. Um, so this is the item that we talk with staff about to use the the ARPA funds um, relating to COVID. And so I just wanted to talk to the council about the program. Um, it's not all employees. There's a cutoff. Um, I think it's directors or assistant directors and above are not eligible for this, which I think all employees should be included. We all had to, you know, work extra hard and um, sacrifices and working through COVID. I'd like to see all the employees included in this and not to have a cutoff in um, position. Mr. Manzaris, is that something that can be done? My understanding is that the cutoff came from the, re the restrictions on the use of the funds. So if you're going to add other individuals, you'd have to find some additional funds to pay that. That's not what I was told in my agenda review, so I don't I, that's know. That's my understanding. I don't know. If you could clarify what you were told, I don't remember. As I said, it was you cut off. You said it was a decision, a management decision. <clears throat> That's correct. I made it at, so <clears throat> we cut it off at deputy directors and above um, for the essential employees. So when you say all employees, I just want to clarify, all employees that were essential employees or all employees across the board? To not eliminate by position what's in this resolution. Deputy directors or directors, yes. if they were considered essential. Yes. Okay. I, I would like to Set. make that modification too. Mr. Mazzaris, your light is on. Oh, I'm sorry, Mayor. All right. So would you state again the mo modification that you're recommending that we include all staff, basically? Correct. To not, right now it has an artificial cutoff of based on position. I'd like to remove that following the same resolution and criteria that's set up. So, Mr. Mazzaris, does that mean a motion or can we just... Can, well, no, I think consensus. that's different than the item that's been presented. So, you, so, so if you wanted, if you would have to move this for approval okay. with that amendment. So, Ms. Matheny, will you make that a motion to amend? Sure. I'll make a motion to um, approve resolution 2022-005R, but removing the artificial restriction based on um, position. We have a motion for Councilmember Matheny for this amendment. Do I have a second? Second. second. We have something from Council Member Trace. And so we can be just clarify what that is, is that's basically adding the deputy director positions and above. Right. Yeah. Would anyone in the audience like to speak to this item? If not, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Deputy Mayor Matheny? Aye. Council Member Urban? Aye. Council Member Askew? Aye. Council Member Trace? Aye. Mayor Blackwell? Aye. Motion carries 5-0. Councilor Matheny, you have the floor for item D. Thank you so much. Um, I was wondering if staff could come up and put the, the PSP up on the screen. It was illegible in the agenda packet, and I got it separately in an email. Um, like, if you tried to zoom in on items, you couldn't read um, 
anything. Um, and I got a separate email, but I, it wouldn't download, so I don't know what the issue was. Can you zoom in um, up along 10th Street? Hopefully it's a better copy. Um, I'd like to make a motion to continue this to the next uh, council meeting so we can get um, copies that, you know, I can review. I, I wasn't able to read the labels, and you still can't read them on here, with the right-of-way, the sidewalk tracks, but I wanted to look at lift station details. Is it possible to continue this? Uh, well, I'd like to make a motion to continue it. We have a motion for continuance. Hang Do on, I have a sir. second? Sir. Can, can you put it on the overhead? That might be better. You have to yeah, you got to put go it down there. there. Got to put it on the overhead over there, sir. You gonna hold your motion for a second? There we go. So when this came to council the first time, Mike, I had a concern about the lift station being right up against the right-of-way line, and it looks like you've got possibly like a sidewalk. I'm not sure. There's, I'm concerned about it being right up against the right-of-way line and if 10th Street gets widened. And we just had that presentation um, from Metro Plan. So... Uh, that's the stuff I wanted to review in the agenda package, but I couldn't, and I can't really tell from this because there's I don't see a dimension off to the side. It says tracked. I think it's saying it's a tract, but it's cut off of the screen. Would you like to speak to that? Please state your name. I'm Bill Hawkins-Smith, Florida Engineering Group, 5127 South Orange Avenue, Orlando. Uh, it's a 32-foot track across the frontage, and that contains the lift station. Has this been coordinated with um, Osceola County and, and with the City of St. Cloud's Transportation Group that no right-of-way is needed across the frontage of this? Yes, it has. Thank you, uh, Aaron Stark, Transportation Manager. Um, on the front of this property, um, there is an eight-foot right-of-way dedication. It's in that first little part that has the sidewalk going right to, it, it carries the same line as the back of the sidewalk. So everything from the sidewalk forward is dedicated as right-of-way as a part of this plan. Um, then they have a 32-foot wide tract in which the um, sidewalk system that's adjacent to the houses, uh, which provides connectivity back to the ADA accessible open space area in the back, that's a private HOA sidewalk on the north side of this um, drive aisle. And uh, all of that, including the driveway locations, has already been coordinated with Osceola County as, as far as the two access points. So they... So, tr so track D, that's, is that the right-of-way dedication? Yes. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. And um, the Metro Plan 10th Street Corridor study, the premise behind it was that there was no acquisition um, plan. Not to say that 10th Street couldn't ever be widened, um, but this will make it challenging if there's a cross access in, in front of it, but the plans for the corridor study is that no acquisition will occur. So with this eight feet that this project is providing, they should be able to uh, fit the facilities that they're recommending in that space. And does this eight foot tract correspond to right away along this corridor? It there's is. not a jog and narrowing across the front of this? It does create a jog, this is widening it. This is bigger than the jog, okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm just concerned when we approve these things and, and then when if the road gets to be widened, we've now put a lift station and we've put all these impediments in the way. So that that's just a concern of mine. So I, I'd like to vote on it separately. Would you like to speak to this item again? My name is Breno, I'm from Lots Partners. I mean, first of all, I would like to thank you all. We've been on this project, uh, it's been four years since we first applied for annexation in 2000, December 2017. It's been very challenging to apply for this project. In the beginning, it was 36 units. We got the annexation denied, then we went to Osceola County. It was approved by Osceola County, and then the city decided to annex that. We came, they changed the requirement for the lift station. It was too expensive. We changed which the cities wanted to have big lots, almost 15,000 square footage. We have now just 10 lots instead of 36. It's not a subdivision anymore. We've been trying to be on the second public hearing for this project since August. Every time the staff needs something else, change this, change that. We're supposed to come in December, in November. They want us to, to white this, give this track D in order to comply if they want to widen the 10th Street. We did that last public hearing. Before last public hearing, we still pull out. And now we are here. I mean, we, we have complied with every requirement and every ask that the city has done in this project. And again, this project has been in this stage with this second hearing. It's been six months, and we have every time, every month, something new come up. Now it's the survey for the trees. I mean, I would like to, to know which specifically the city needs. I want to do whatever it takes to, to comply with the city and get this project done. But again, hopefully we are in this time that the real estate is helping us. But I just could imagine two years ago being five years on this project and cannot get this approved because some small things. I, I know, I, I understand the concern of the 10th Street, then the, the dedication, the right of way, the open space area, the, the, the pond, everything we've been trying to comply with the city's requirements. I, I really don't understand this. I mean, there is the track D that it was previously, one month ago, thought and draw based on if the Osceola County wants to wide the 10th Street. So it's there, the Osceola County approved that the staff, staff approved that, that, not approved, but say that's okay, these eight foot wide. I mean, I just want to make clear all my challenges to get this project approved. And I, I mean, I want the best for the city. I want to deliver the best project for the city. I mean, we'll be bigger homes over there. I mean, everything that the city wanted and asked us, we have been provided. Just want to make it clear. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Councilmember Trace. Thank you. Um, so this going down from 35, 36 lots or whatever down to 10 is, is fine with me. Um, actually, it, the design's a little weird with this kind of slip road next to it, but um, I think with what we're trying to do on 10th Street and only having now two conflict points along the road kind of helps instead of having, what was that, 10, 10 individual driveways coming in and you know cars backing out, this will this will kind of help the flow through. Um, the lift station up along the road is kind of a challenge for me because there's no room for landscaping or something to, to block it visually, not, not necessarily widening the road because if you, if 
you widen this, you're going to have to deal with, I don't know, 100 homeowners all the way down the corridor. So it's, it's one of those that's going to be a challenge regardless. Um, so if, if, is it possible to move the uh, lift station back 10 feet into that last lot to where we can get some landscape, a little landscape buffer in front of it? Yeah, it'll just affect that lot. Of can the I see? It will affect, actually. Slide. It's been affected a lot. Can you slide there, please? So it's that tracked? We can, I mean, kind of put a fence with the landscape. I think it's still room for that. I mean, still have a dedication on, on, on the north side of the lift station, on the south side of the station, on the, the left side of the lift station. I mean... The idea, if you say that you want to have a landscape to kind of enclosure the lift station, we can do that. But move that, it would be a challenge because we don't have space anymore to, to put the driveway on the lot 10. So, again, I mean, it, it's been very cut off on, on the, the lots, and, and I don't see any space over there to move the lift station. We can kind of protect, and again, it would be, I don't know on top of my head, but and the engineer that designed that, he's, he's not here. But I think this is being thinking again, and, and I think it will have some protection over there too. If they want to wide the 10th Street, we still have space to, to move and go in, into the, the lift station. And it's a private lift station, by the way, and still have space to kind of put some landscape to protect visually the lift station, if that's the case, you can have a note. I just, I mean, my concern is, again, being, we submit the final engineering because it was supposed to be everything ready 60 days ago, and we have the engineer now. We have to submit the engineer again, which is being drawing again, and the submission for South Florida Water Department, we need to submit again because we changed this because the right away that goes through the open space is it's supposed to be between the lot fifth and sixth and now we move to this in order to have more space and comply with the driveways and the street and, and the buffer so i mean I, i'm not the right person to say this if it's we move these five feet from each side it will affect the project but if the concern is the landscape to protect uh visually these and have been complied i think that's not a problem if we put a landscape on that okay thank you no problem thank you yeah. councilman Rothini. thank you i appreciate all the challenges but i brought up the lift station the very first time it was read and then when it came in for the last whatever the last approval was i brought up the lift station again um and it, that that was the time that we talked about the driveways i mean i personally don't like lift stations front and center on a development right along 10th Street. It's not very aesthetically pleasing. Um, you know, I would try to push them kind of back a house instead of like right up front. So um, I think that's a reasonable suggestion to move it another 10 feet back into lot number 10. Um, There's the pond over there. So we need to redesign that. And again, the soil test over there is not good enough to because it's close to the lake. And there is another lift station, a, a public one, bigger than these, right? I mean, one mile, 1,000 feet from these, that's the tree. So it's, it's not that, if you say they put a landscape over there, it's not that bad. And if you do a landscape of that, this is a small private lift station. I mean, I think a, a good landscape can help this. Move to, to the north of the property, close to the pond or the open space, it would be challenging in terms of the, the level and again the soil over there is closer to the lake, so it, it's it's it could, it's a challenge to put on the north of the property for sure. On the back of the lots in this case. Motion to approve uh, the preliminary uh, subdivision plan. I don't have a number for this, but for Whistler Court. Um, but with moving the lift station or tract A north 10 feet to provide a landscape buffer. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second from Council Member Thini. Would anyone in the audience like to speak to this item? Madam Clerk, you please call the roll. Council Member Urban? Aye. Council Member Askew? Aye. Council Member Trace? Aye. Deputy Mayor Matheny? Aye. 
Mayor Blackwell? Aye. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. I think you know what to do now. Would anyone in the audience like to speak to the, the remaining items on the agenda? On the consent agenda. Sir? On the consent agenda. On the consent agenda. Motion to approve uh, items B and C from the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion from Councilmember Trace, a second from Councilmember Matheny. Madam Clerk. Councilmember Askew. Aye. Councilmember Trace. Aye. Deputy Member Matheny. Aye. Councilmember Urban. Aye. Mayor Blackwell. Aye. Motion carries 5 0. The next portion of tonight's meeting are public hearings. Madam Clerk, will you share with us item number one? Final public hearing for ordinance number 2022-11, an ordinance of the City Council amending the St City of St. Cloud Police and Firefighters Retirement System, adopted by ordinance 2006-125, as subsequently amended, amending section 6, benefits, amount, and eligibility, amending section 7, pre-retirement, death, amending section 10, optional forms, benefits, amending section 16, minimums, distribution of benefits, providing for codification, providing for severability of provisions, repealing all ordinances in conflict here within, and providing an effective date. Good evening, Council. Mimi Tran, HR Director. The proposed ordinance um, for the St. Cloud Police and Firefighters Retirement System, this is for the Pension Board. They are requesting to amend the recent changes to the IRC code, and it is mainly just to change the required minimum distribution age from 70 and a half to 72. This change was also um, approved by council for the general employee pension last year, and this will amend section six, seven, 10, and 16 of their pension. And staff does requ uh, request for approval of this ordinance, and um, we do recommend it. There is no cost for this ordinance change. Thank you. Would anyone in the audience like to speak to this item? If not, we'll have discussion and or a motion by council. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion from Council Member Matheny, a second from Council Member Askew. Madam Clerk. Council Member Trace. Aye. Council Member, or Deputy Mayor Matheny. Aye. Council Member Urban. Aye. Council Member Askew. Aye. Mayor Blackwell. Aye. Motion carries 5-0. Brings item number two, Madam Clerk. Final public hearing for ordinance number 2022-12, an ordinance of the City of St. Cloud further amending the City of St. Cloud Police and Firefighters <clears throat> Retirement System, adopted by ordinance number 2006-125, as subsequently amended, amending section five, contributions, providing for codification, providing for severability and provisions, repealing all ordinances in conflict here within and providing an effective date. Mimi Tran, HR Director. For this proposed ordinance, this is amending the City of St. Cloud Police Officers and Firefighters Retirement System. For the pension, this is only for the firefighters only. The ordinance was previously approved by council with an effective date of 10-1 uh, of 2021 in order to make the change uh, match the uh, city's payroll schedule we are requesting to make the change to 10 9 of 2021 and this was for the decreased years of credit service for the firefighters from 25 to 20 and in order to do, to do that they needed to increase their pension contribution rate from 5.55 percent to 12.62 percent the um, amend amendment would cost uh, the city a budgeted amount of 6,500. Staff does request for approval of this ordinance. Would anyone in the audience like to speak to this item? Then we'll entertain discussion and or motion from council. Motion to approve. We have a motion from Councilor Athenia, a second from the mayor. Madam Clerk. Deputy Mayor Matheny. Aye. Council Member Urban. Aye. Councilmember Askew. Aye. Councilmember Trace. Aye. Mayor Blackwell. Aye. Motion carries 5 0. Brings to item number three, Madam Clerk. First reading and introduction for ordinance number 2022 09. An ordinance of the City of St. Cloud, Florida, establishing the proposed property known as Roan Bridge and further described herein and recognizing the Roan Bridge Community Development District, created and chartered by the Uniform General Law and Uniform Community Development District Act of Florida. Chapter 190, Florida Statutes 201 and hereafter. 
acknowledging the uniform district charter expressing sections 190.006-190.041 Florida statutes and as referenced and provided in section 190.004 section 4 Florida statutes and confirming section 189.031 subsection 3 Florida statutes establishing the district on the property proposed in this petition and designating the initial members of the board of supervisors and recognizing the designation of powers of the district and providing for severability and effective date. Good evening, Council. Jesse Anderson, Principal Planner. Uh, before you, we have the Rome Bridge Community Development District. This is for Ordinance 2022-09. It is for approximately 276.36 acres of land located west of Old Hickory Tree Road and south of East 19th Street. For the background for this, the Uniform Community Development District Act, Chapter 190 of Florida State Statutes permits the creation of community development districts for the provision of community development services and facilities. Currently today, the applicant is coming forth with a petition to establish a community development district for the Rome Bridge Mixed Use Development. The purpose of the CDD will be to plan, finance, acquire, construct, operate, and maintain at least the following standards sanitary and sewer facilities, water distribution systems, reuse water systems, storm water systems, electrical service stations, conservation mitigation, on-site public road improvements, off-site public road improvements, and other infrastructure. The Rhone Bridge CDD provides enhancements beyond the code, uh, specifically in terms of entry enhancements, common area enhancements in parks, and an amenity center. It is uh, cohesive with the strategic plan goals of growth management and infrastructure, which both of which are furthered by the CDD. And finally, uh, staff recommends approval of this ordinance. And as such, City Council is requested to approve ordinance number 2022-09 for the Rome Bridge Community Development District. Staff is available for any questions, and the applicant is here as well. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Is the applicant here? Would you like to speak to this item? Uh, no, Council. Please step up to the mic, please. Uh, Joe Brown with the law firm uh, QTAC Rock, Tallahassee, Florida, 32312, uh, representing the applicant. Um, if there are any questions, I'm happy to try and address them or uh, address them. We'll be back on February 10th uh, for a final public hearing on this ordinance. So if there are questions, I'm happy to do it now. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll have presentation materials and can address those questions on the 10th. Right, thank you very much. If you'll stand by, would anyone in the audience like to speak to this item? If not, we'll entertain discussion and or motion by council. Councilmember Matheny. <laughs> um, I was trying to let somebody else go first. Um, so I think whenever we approve a CDD that gives the development a lot of um, buying power. You know, it allows you to bond like a government does, allows you to do a lot of things. And I think there's a lot of responsibility with allowing someone to become a CDD because I personally feel like most people who purchase inside of a CDD don't quite understand what they're getting into. No matter what packet of papers they get at closing, you know, I've bought a house before, there's a lot of stuff in there, like you get confused. So, um, Personally, I thought the application was weak as far as like why we should create a CDD. Um, you know, it says you're going to do utilities and road improvements and things like that. Well, all developments do that. You know, enhanced landscaping, it's not really getting me excited about the idea. It says that there was going to be an amenity, but you haven't started designing, so we don't really know what it is, but we promise we'll do something. Um, I guess so for me, I need a lot more details and meat in this application before I would feel comfortable moving it forward um, as a CDD. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Trace. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was kind of allude to the same thing of just more detail. Um, I think the one across the street brought a lot of detail with amenities, landscape package, things that are over and above what code is. Um, one of the pros that really isn't mentioned a lot of times in these is CDDs do make sure that the community is maintained at a maintained at a better standard because they they have even more rights than HOAs on ensuring that maintenance of common tracks and also um, homeowners maintenance happens a lot more. So 
you know, I'm kind of along the same lines of if we can bring more detail. I know this is probably the first step in the process, but I mean, it's just there was nothing other than a couple blurbs in here. Any other discussion? Well, I'm kind of feeling the same way. It just seemed like there were so many vague generalities here. I just would certainly like to have something a little more specific. I would be willing to support the first reading, and you bring something back with a little more meat on it, or the second reading definitely would not be approved, I don't think. Uh, but that would be my position. Any other discussion? Then I would make a motion for the approval of this first reading, but just making you aware we need more details. Councilmember Trace. Well, uh, you made a motion, so I'll wait for a second. Can I have a second? I'll second it. We have a motion from the mayor and a second from council member Askew. So I do have a question. Mr. Manzaris, does this in any way um, force us to have uh, the, the same motion for a, a second hearing, or is that us no. giving the direction enough? This is basically a commonplace way of looking at it is the council said, okay, we're willing to consider this for final hearing. The applicant still has to come before you, give you the same, meet the requirements of the statute to establish the they met all the requirements of the statute and have all the appropriate findings to do. And, they, and I think what they've been indicated is they, they will be prepared to do that at, this, at the second reading. Okay. Do you guys have enough information to, to go on? All right. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I guess I'm sorry, Mr. Trace. So to answer your question, if they don't meet that burden at the second meeting, then you, whatever you do tonight is, can, it doesn't have to be. I, I read between the lines. I got okay, Thank you. <laughs> Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Urban? Aye. Councilmember Askew? Aye. Councilmember Trace? Aye. Deputy Mayor Matheny? I'm a yes, but I need a lot of detail. Mayor Blackwell? Yes, with, with great expectations. Motion carries 5 0. Brings us to item number four. <clears throat> First, reading an introduction for ordinance number 2022-10, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of St. Cloud, Florida, closing, vacating, and abandoning a right-of-way located at 2112 Oak View Circle, specifically describing the body of this ordinance, providing for servability, conflicts, and effective date. Good evening, Melissa Dunklin, Community Development Director. The case before you is for the abandonment of easement request for 2112 Oak View Court. The applicant is requesting the abandonment of the existing 20-foot drainage and utility easement running along the rear property line in order to construct an in-ground swimming pool. During the DRC review process, Public Works requested that a 5-foot easement remain along the rear property boundary. This request meets the intent for the strategic plan goal for growth management. DRC has reviewed the request and recommends approval of ordinance number 2022-10 with the condition that a five-foot drainage easement remain along the rear property boundary. Staff is requesting that we continue the second hearing from February 10th, 2022 to a date certain of March 24th, 2022 in order to give the applicant time to establish the five-foot drainage and utility easement. At this time, staff and the applicant is available for any questions. Would the applicant like to speak to this item? Okay. Would anyone in the audience like to speak to this item? If not, we'll have discussion and or motion by council. Motion to approve. We have a motion for approval by Council Member Matheny. Do I have a second? Second, but I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see your line off. Council Member Trace, are you going to make a second? Yeah, second. Okay. And I'm fine with this. I just have a question in general. So uh, this, like, I'm pretty sure there was one of these that happened in the same neighborhood. <laughs> I don't remember how long ago, a year ago, two years ago. Is it possible when we have these to look into trying to maybe amend it for the whole neighborhood at once and just help them out? Because I know staff's bogged down with a lot of stuff, and these are like simple little things that take a lot of time. Is it possible to just fix kind of a bunch of areas at once when we're, when we're going through something like this? I don't know if it would be possible to get all the homeowners on board and everything just seems like we'd piecemeal these things instead of just 
Well, on a more global citywide basis, uh, we've been looking at amending 5.5.4C of the Land Development Code to take out the piece related to easements. It deals with rights of way and easements, and uh, we have always felt that that was mostly intended to be right, right of way. As, as you know, a right of way is a grant to the overall public. These easements are specific for the utility pieces that are in there. So I think how, in this particular, one of the things staff has we need to work on and get it done is to remove that from them. So it essentially, that would be a staff in, um, a basically case-by-case -case interpretation without having to come back to council. Okay, because I feel b bad. I mean, a pool now is $50,000 plus, and then you have to go through a three-month process and a couple other thousand dollars just to come through this and just Very time, good time and unnecessary expense. So, okay. That's Excellent. As long as we're good fixing that. We'll get with planning and see if we can cool. expedite getting this done. Melissa will work until about 4 o'clock tomorrow morning. We have any other discussion? We have a motion for Councilmember Athena, second for Councilmember Trace. Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Councilmember Askew? Aye. Councilmember Trace? Aye. Deputy Mayor Matheny? Aye. Councilmember Urban? Aye. Mayor Aye. Blackwell? Aye. Motion carries 5 0. Madam Clerk, could you please read item number 5? Public hearing for resolution number 2022 001R. A resolution of the City Council of the City of St. Cloud, Florida, granting an approval of a pain medication license for pain management clinic located at 4589 HC Yates Lane, St. Cloud, Florida, as described in the body of this resolution. Good evening, Melissa Dunklin, Community Development Director. This request before you is for approval of a pain management license for the Center for Pain Treatment located at 4859 HC Yates Lane. The proposed location is an existing optometrist office. The future land use is commercial and the zoning is highway business. Here is the future land use map depicting the commercial land use designation for the subject property and the surrounding areas. And here is the zoning map depicting the current zoning district for the subject property and the zoning districts for the surrounding areas. DRC has recommended approval with the following conditions, that the applicant provide proof of high impact windows and doors within 30 days of approval and comply with the city code, the physician affidavit and the owner attestation. The applicant shall also submit the required background checks for each employee within 30 days to the St. Cloud Police Department. The applicant has provided all pertinent information required for proper consideration by the City Council. As such, staff recommends approval of resolution number 2022-001R for the management, sorry, pain management license with the conditions previously presented. At this time, staff and the applicants are available for questions. Would the applicant like to speak to this item? Hi, I'm Dr. Ron Stern, and I'm the applicant, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Well, thank you for your hold on a second. Does anyone in the audience like to speak to this item first? If not, we'll have discussion and or questions, motion by council. Do we have any questions? Councilmember Member Thini. Thank you. Um, so, Mr. Manzaras, this approval, does it... Um, come back annually or what what happens with the duration of the approval it's not an annual approval so it's in, basically it's in place until I'm sorry, but Ms. Sanders, you have a question no, no, sorry. okay uh, so no it's an approval that's the process you set forth up on the pain it won't come back so my concern with all the pain mm -hmm. management um, pain treatment centers I'm, I'm sure this is a great one but um, you know I did have the conversation with our police department and about the processes and approvals and and you know I would I guess like to find a way that this isn't in place in perpetuity or if there's a way to and I guess I'm looking at Mr. Manzaris for a way to crop this um, so if we get a lot of complaints about this pain <clears throat> treatment facility if we have a lot of police activity can we cancel the conditional use like what's what's our recourse can we put I guess can I put conditions into the motion that 
if we get excessive complaints or um, police activity, then we could revoke the conditional uh, uh, use? Uh, you, you certainly could, um, but I do believe there's a sufficient amount of um, remedies in the city code that would allow it to address that if we started having problems and we could bring it back in front of the city council for basically a failure to comply with this approval as well as any other provisions of the, of the code. So by way of example, you have a provision, and, and I'd have to look at it real quick, but I know there's a, every property that gets built has, is required to have a certificate of occupancy. There's a provision in the code that says you can revoke a certificate of occupancy if oh, the codes aren't complied with or the laws aren't applied with. And there's a similar one. Is there a similar one for the conditional use? Right. There, there is the option to uh, revoke or suspend um, if at any time the city manager or his designee determines that any pain medication license holder has failed to comply with any applicable conditions of its license or operating in a manner that is harmful to the public health, safety, or welfare and not in compliance with the terms of this article, he or she may place on the city council public hearing agenda an item to determine that the pain medication license should be revoked. So it, it does give the option for the city manager or staff to bring this back in front of you to say, hey, um, there, there is an issue and we do believe that it needs to be revoked. We do require that they renew this license every year um, with staff and they pay a fee and they have to provide certain reports to the police department annually. So it is renewed annually? Correct. Okay. Well, but it doesn't come back to the council. But that's fine. I just want to have, I don't want to have some arbitrary code written in some book somewhere that no one knows. <laughs> you know, I want the applicant to know up front, like, hey, if we start having problems, we're going to shut you down. <laughs> yes, sir, you're welcome to speak. So, uh, yeah, I certainly, I certainly understand the concerns about pain management clinics. I want to emphasize a couple of things. First of all, this is not my first pain management clinic. I've had a pain management clinic for over 20 years in Melbourne, Florida. I have another clinic that I operate in Sebastian, Florida. We have never, ever had any issues with the police regarding our pain management clinics. We don't distribute medications. We practice very conservative prescribing we do not prescribe to people who are abusing drugs. We monitor them monthly. I use very strict criteria for prescribing. We've never had any kind of issue. We're not a, you know, the standard pill mill that I'm sure everybody knows about. That's not what we do. And so I just want to try and address that concern. Thank you very much. Anything I would else? like to bring up one, one other point. Please step up to my please share your And name, my name is Todd Lavelle, and, and mm -hmm. I'm the business manager for the practice and been in healthcare for about 30 years. There's a couple of different types of pain management clinics. There's some where you go in and, and you visit with a physician, and typically you get a script, and that happens very often. But let's just say there's a member of your fire department that was lifting a patient in an ambulance and they hurt their spine or their, their, their back. Well, what typically happens is in ongoing, you have to go to an interventional physician. What an interventional does, unlike a regular pain clinic, is you have what's called a C-arm. It's, it's, and you're doing an injection in with that, the shoulder, the back, and the facet, et cetera. And you're doing an injection into that point. That's, so this practice is, is an interventional pain management practice. In each of the locations, there's a, a room dedicated, and Dr. Stern does them. The, the, he goes to the hospital, and he does it in surgery centers and in our, in, the own, in our own clinics, and it's interventional. That is the majority of the practice is interventional pain management, completely different vertical or, or kind of um, uh, sector within pain management, just, to, just so you understand. And if you did come and visit even the practice eventually, you would see that's really what it's about. Well, my back's been hurting me, so I may be coming to see you soon. So. You absolutely should. <laughs> Any other questions from council? No. Could I entertain a motion for adoption? Motion to approve. I'll make that a second. We have a motion from council member Askew, a second from the mayor. Madam Clerk. Council member Trace. Aye. Deputy Mayor Matheny. Aye. Council member Urban. Aye. Council member Askew. Aye. Mayor Blackwell. Aye. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. God bless you.
That brings us to council action. The first item, Madam Clerk, will you read? Discussion of possible action regarding council appointments to committees and boards of other entities. Madam Clerk. Yes, before you, you'll have the handout that we gave. Yes. Uh, the one that was at question was the TDC to see if anybody wanted to um, do that. And that will be meeting um, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. once a month. And the dates are listed here. Every other month, don't they? Oh, every other month. I'm sorry. Thank you. Councilmember Matheny. Thank you. So this came about because I offered to take the um, TDC from the mayor because he's got five items. I'm not allowed to serve on the TDC. Um, so it came back. So it's basically back to the mayor. <laughs> but I was, uh, what I had mentioned in the last meeting was if the mayor had another committee that he would like me to cover for him, I would be happy to. Well, there wasn't one that I had. Um, you know, I'll do the TDC if no one else has the time or can't do it, so I have some flexibility. But um, any of you would like to be on the TDC, you're welcome to step up. It, it looks like, I, I mean, I would be able to do it unless uh, Mr. Urban is, wants to jump in there. Uh, I was, I was going to volunteer if you weren't. Either way, I, it doesn't matter to me. But I, I think it would be a good eye-opener for you, so I would, I would pass it on to you. <laughs> okay, sure. Well, so do we need to make that a motion? No, sir, as long as I have consensus. Okay. Are there any objections? Congratulations. You have another job. There you go. <laughs> Boom. That's it. All right. That are there any other items you need to address? That's all, all we have on that one. Good to see I you do back here. Make a comment. We are working on the recruitment for our committees and boards. We're open for applications, and that'll be coming back in February. Yeah, I know you've got some uh, uh, vacancies, I think, coming up on the Finance Committee for sure. So. Yeah. Did, All right. Did we get a paper? Councilmember Thien, is your light still on? Oh, sorry. Did we get a paper on that yet? Like what's open? No. Mr. Manzaris. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, uh, I wanted to briefly talk with you about one item tonight. Uh, and this will probably be the first of uh, items we bring over the next couple of meetings for you. So uh, we are requesting that this, the, uh, the, the council give direction to the mayor uh, to send a letter of opposition to the governor, Senate president, Speaker of the House, and the Osceola County Legislative Delegation regarding Senate Bill 620, its combined bill, House Bill 569. This is a bill that is getting a lot of traction in the legislature, as we understand right now and basically creates a cause of action for businesses to file against a city in the event that the busy business file a lawsuit against the city in the event that a business can allege that it has lost 15% of its profits due to an ordinance or code adopted by the adopted by the city um, it's it's pretty onerous it creates a cause of it creates some litigation issues it is very speculative in terms of how they would determine loss of revenue loss of profits um, and we think it is, uh, is something that uh, really could be detrimental to the municipalities and counties in the state. Uh, so um, I think some of you may have heard about this bill already, and it is getting some traction. I know the group are going to be going up to Tallahassee. Um, if you have an opportunity to voice opposition to it, I think it would be a good thing to do. So as we did last year, uh, and we're going to do a couple more before, I'm sure, in the next two meetings to address what's going on in the legislature, we would ask that the city council authorized the mayor to send a letter to those uh, individuals, and I provided you a draft of the letter that uh, we would suggest that the mayor send. Can this just be a consensus? Yes, it's just more direction. And Are there any questions? I certainly am strongly in support of this move. Councilmember Trace. So is this just taking Burt Harris and just adding business damages? Essentially, it? essentially it is. Um, however, it doesn't have the same. We're concerned that it does. It, it it it's even less speculative in terms of the determination of damages and loss of revenue than the Burt Harris piece is, uh, and um, and of, and of course it takes it even a step further because Burt Harris there used to be there, 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 
it does require still some sort of direct relation to the particular property. This would seem like to physical be, damage. Right, exactly. Yeah. This has seemed to be just flat out wide open for anybody. So, um, in theory, you just, in retrospect, we were talking about pain management clinics just a few minutes ago, and of course we adopted that code. That code's been in place. But if that code wasn't in place, that ordinance wasn't in place now, and the city council wanted to do that in the future, some business that was in there could then take the position. Well, you've now restricted me to the point where I've lost revenue, I've lost costs, so the city would have lost its ability to regulate a business uh, that uh, like that, that it felt was appropriate for our community. Our biggest problem with this, as I'm sure every one of your biggest problems with this, it's again another one of these efforts by the state to basically insert itself into St. Cloud when local government really knows best, and uh, I think that's the biggest problem. It's another attack on home rule, um, and uh, that's why we we suggested that you follow this letter of opposition. Yeah, and I'm thinking like home-based businesses or even like Airbnb, since we can't really regulate that at all, of like if we have a parade and we block off the road and they say, all right, now I'm damaged 15% because you blocked off the road for a day and a half for a craft fair or something. And That's the speculative piece about how far it can go. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yeah, well, okay. Well, if we should have a, an amendment to our sign ordinance. <laughs> oh, you, you cost me a lot of business. Yeah. Any other discussion? So we have a consensus then for sending this letter? And I have one other. I, uh, we, uh, uh, there were, I don't want to get anybody excited. There aren't any problems with the Stevens Plantations contracts. They're all moving forward. However, we would like to have a DSD meeting on as before your CRA meeting next week to, have, to talk about one, a small amendment to the uh, EMF of Winter Park Agreement for the lots on the retail site. Okay. But we're all we're moving forward on all those projects because I don't right. I don't want to waste the mayor's little dancing jig that he did last time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Is, is there any issue with doing it after? Well, cause our our meeting's already at six, right? Well, that could be before. I guess it's up to everyone. We can we do it after. We, we usually did it after, so the CRA board doesn't have to sit and wait yeah. for us. Well, it's your, your call. We can do it after the CRA. I understand after. the CRA agenda. I saw. I think we just saw it. I saw it this Short. afternoon. It's, it's true. It's relatively short. We can do it afterwards. I, I assure you, this, the DSD meeting will take at most 15 minutes. Oh, you right. said you've done it now. Yeah. <laughs> you, can't, you can't put a time frame on it. <laughs> it's going to be three hours I, long. I'll I will be surprised if it doesn't. <laughs> You'll change that. All right. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manzaris. Mr. Sturgeon. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first off, February 3rd, CRA meeting, I'll not be present. I'll leave you in capable hands with the deputy city manager. Um, secondly, back in 2019, a policy was put in place for fee reduction and waivers for facility rentals. Uh, there's a scoring system that was put in place. It was really awkward for the city manager to try to decide who gets waivers, how much of a waiver, how much of a fee reduction. So this resolution 2019-115 arm was put in place. Um, I do have a unique situation. Uh, I consider Main Street one of our strongest partners here in the community and they went through the scoring process and it came out to $1,462 um, for their event Saturday night and I'd like to request a, a one-time waiver of the city council for that fee for this event. Well, I would Saturday certainly be night. in favor of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Uh, Have a good evening. I, I, um, is there some way we can just maybe write that into their contract? I mean, so it's just taken care of? I will talk to Mrs. Stark about doing that and our team, and we'll get that put in place. All right. Okay. Good idea. Anything else? No, Mayor. Thank you. Council Member Matheny. Y'all aren't so lucky this time. I have two things. Uh, one is about uh, in our last workshop we talked about modifying the JPA go, working with the county I would just like to ask again that we expedite that um, and kind of get a timeline from the city manager as to when that is going to happen you don't have to tell me right now but you know next week send us all an email and say you're committing to have it done by whatever the date is hopefully quickly um, and then the second item is, I got a phone call from a resident, um, and I, maybe some of you have got it as well, who um, kind of falls into the void of that ag ordinance we were working on that we didn't finish. So I didn't realize we didn't finish it. In my mind, I thought we had gone through the second reading, but we didn't. So we went through the first reading, 
we didn't do the second reading. So I would like to um, also see if we could pick that back up and and finish kind of that process. I know we were trying to honor the, um, you know, ag nature of our community. I know we're a growing city, but there's still, you know, the ag uses and bona fide ag and, you know, things like that. And we need to, like, put the belt and suspenders on that document. So I'd like to see if we could kind of revisit that as well. I'm sure you have a consensus on that. Oh, yeah. Of the council on that. Manzaris is giving me the look. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm asked, I guess I was going to go, Mr. Sturgeon. Do we, we have enough direction about what we're, where, how we want, how far we want to go with this, and where you just want staff to bring back a recommendation? I, I yeah, think I think at the time, the um, Mr. Anderson had some concerns, and so that's why we didn't go to the second reading. And so I'm sure the bright minds over there in our planning department will be able to come up with a, a way to kind of finish that and move forward okay so can I request you give me to the end of March because we got some pretty significant um, agendas coming up and we'll come back with a recommendation I'll just say do it as quickly as you can hey, if, did we need to workshop anything I can't remember if there was like a, a sticking point or it was it just procedural it had to do with like it was like RE zoning and I'm y'all are gonna be impressed, but I've been having this conversation because of the com the issue that the resident is having. They have 20 hens and um, like two roosters and three ducks or something, and so they're in code enforcement right now um, because of all the animals. That's but <laughs> but if they have the re and they have the re zoning, and so if our ordinance was in place based on the acreage of the property, I think they'd be okay. But we didn't finalize it. So I think there were some concerns. Ms. Miller could get up and talk about it if we need more detail. But I think it had to do with some commercial uses coming in with the, the ordinance. We can add it to our next workshop if we want to, like, revisit. Yeah. Good evening. Veronica Miller, Deputy City Manager. Um, the previous conversations and why we stopped was just a, a little bit of the original history, we were moving forward with the enclaves. And when we were moving forward with the enclaves, there was people who were zoned agriculture in the county who we wanted, to, the city council wanted to ensure that they could continue their uses. So we didn't annex those people. And the proposed draft that was written was for RE zoning instead of the agricultural zoning. And the concern and why it didn't move, why staff didn't bring it back was because we have existing properties that are zoned RE. And so the concern was that you could have existing properties that are now affected by this potential agricultural zoning. And so staff felt that we needed to, instead of making the modifications to the RE zoning, we needed to either modify the agricultural zoning or come up with a new solution um, and not modify the RE zoning, which is the zoning that this person recently <coughs> purchased and then added the um, Foul. Aviary. 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 Right. And and the neighbor did this code enforcement action started because the roosters were chasing the the neighbor's children. So um, that would be an issue. There's the yeah. there's the. There'll be a track star now. So. <laughs> be so can we add that to an it'd upcoming be, workshop? Be roof roll, yes. <laughs> okay. Great. That's For it for me. At my house. Are you through? I'm done. All right. Council Member Colby, Urban. I don't have anything, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you all. Have a good night. Council Member Askew. Um, I would like to thank the city manager and staff for helping out a small business on Pennsylvania Avenue, a nice barbecue place that was run into challenges. And um, it was uh, Mr. Sturgeon jumped in, got the right people in place, moved some things around, and uh, I think the business truly appreciates that. And I think I think most of the council, I'm sure you're heard about it and everything. So we, we really appreciate it, Bill. I mean, come a long way in uh, all, all these years, and it's just it's just great to see you can basically snap your fingers and you put your team together and make it's things actually. happen, <laughs> or whatever it is. You know, so. When you do that, the lights turn off. I have a great <laughs> team. <laughs> no, that's it. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councilor Trace. I was going to say this exact same thing, so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trace. Done? Uh, I have a thank you 
letter from the Boy Scouts of Central Florida expressing their appreciation for a $5,000 donation uh, that we gave this past year. And, uh, and so just wanted you guys to know that they are very grateful. Also wanted to uh, make you aware that the Oslo Council on Aging uh, officially had a ribbon cutting and opened the doors there at the food pantry to not only uh, continue the work of the food pantry, but to also to provide the additional services that the Oslo uh, Council on Aging provides, uh, which are quite diverse, and so it's a real asset to see that uh, continuing on, and we certainly need to think about you know, how can we help hopefully in the future come up with a uh, solution for uh, some kind of permanent location. With that, uh, brings us to our information section, report section. Thursday, February the 3rd, there will be a CRA meeting at 6 p.m. here in Council Chambers. Thursday, February the 10th, there will be a City Council meeting at 6.30 p.m. here in Council Chambers. Warrant list number four in the Tree Advisory Committee uh, meeting minutes for October have been approved and are available for your review. <coughs> and with that, there's nothing else in our agenda. We will be adjourned. When you said the 22.